Hello and welcome to Alone in Dreams Tutorial 1. I'm Alec Kaloka from Infinite Ammo in Winnipeg and this is just an introduction to the Alone in Dreams project. It's uh, an adventure game with a twist, or a number of twists actually. It has a bunch of different gameplay types in it. It's also the basis for a series of video tutorials that I'm going to put together. And that's what you're watching right now. Basically, I'm just going to introduce the game so you understand sort of what it's about, and then I'm going to start talking about how we made a few of the things in here. So I'll just show you one other area really quickly. It's under this little tent here. And yeah, I'll stop there. So basically you get what the uh, the basics of the game are about. You can walk around by clicking on things. Your cursor changes when you hover over different things in the environment. Um, you can pick up items that go into an inventory and then you can do different things with them. The ball, for example, actually lets you go into a first person mode where you can aim and throw the ball and affect things in the world. Um, so that's just some of the stuff that's going on immediately in this area. I can talk about how a few of them work. Um, right now we're just in this bedroom scene but we also have a prefab here called global and this is kind of one thing that I do in a lot of different projects I make a global object and I stuff a bunch of things in there that are going to be used in different scenes throughout the game so one is the camera that actually goes around and the camera for the game becomes kind of complicated and it has a bunch of different things that it can do um, inside it and a bunch of effects on it and stuff like that um, this is the inventory and it's actually built um, really far away from everything else. It's kind of just floating off at this, you know, negative 10,000 X, positive 10,000 Y, positive 10,000 Z position. Um, and that's just so it won't clip through any of the, the scene geometry and we can render it with a completely different camera. Um, in this case it's called overlay camera and it has a number of different settings. It's set so it only clears the depth buffer. Um, so we can still see things behind it and it's set to this depth value that means that it will that just means the order basically that the camera will render in that just makes it render after the main camera uh, rendering path has to be set to forward because we want to use shaders on the camera uh, before this one that's how we get that blur effect uh, when you open your inventory I'll just fast forward we actually have a fast forward key built into this game um, just so we can really quickly test things because we need to go over and over again things time and time again so you can see the backgrounds blurred out here and we're rendering with that other camera we can actually go here and, and check this camera out we could even move it around you know if we wanted to be stupid um, so that's just the basics of how we make that appear and uh, how we actually make it work and how we display items and stuff is going to be a whole other topic now I'm collaborating, collaborating with Frederico Machuca who's in Brazil and he does all of the 3D modeling and texturing and all that stuff and he's collaborating with one of his friends who does animations um, so there are a few things in here that aren't finished yet some of the animations aren't done the item screen will probably look different the book will probably look a little different we're still tweaking things all the time we're tweaking the music, we're tweaking the sound um, and that's kind of how game development goes. You kind of want to get the framework in place and, and, and something that you can start working with. You sort of refine from there. You refine the things you think are going to be most important. 
So we submitted this game to the IGF and we have about maybe an hour to two hours of gameplay depending on how people are playing the game. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting sort of crunch period because we had to make decisions like, okay, what's the most important thing that we should put in next? Um, and it's kind of fun to work that way actually. You kind of filter out a lot of things that you would worry about that aren't really that important to the main game. Um, but we still have a lot of other side stuff in here, which is neat. It feels it feels beefy, which is good. Um, so this is an item that you can pick up, and it's got this green box, and you'll see these green boxes a lot because they're basically trigger boxes. And that just means something that won't actually hit anything physically, it won't stop anything from going through it, but it will notice when something collides with it. So uh, in this case, we're actually going to be using a ray cast and I'm not going to explain what that means yet, but basically that's what we do to click on things. We send raycasts out from the camera and they intersect, they hit different things in the scene. In this case it's hitting this trigger box and then we know that this item has been clicked on. There's an item script on this object and that will get notified when it's clicked on. Um, and that's sort of how that, that system starts to work, but of course we'll talk uh, in more detail about that later on. Right now I just sort of want to do a general overview here. Um, the player can also be clicked on, but more importantly for moving around there are different areas, we call them areas anyway, and they're essentially trigger boxes. I'm going to delete all the stuff in this area here, just so you can see that it's just a trigger box with an area script on it that is linked to a camera. I'll undo that delete. Inside the area there are all these different things that you can click on. So basically once you go inside an area all those hotspots will turn on and once you leave the area all those hotspots will turn off. Oh there's some nice uh, normal mapping going on here. I didn't notice that before. That's cool. Anyway, um, so this area is linked to a camera and all these cameras are turned off by default. So we can toggle them on and we can just see what this camera is going to see once the player enters this area. So that's kind of handy for quickly going through and tweaking the cameras, which we have to do a lot in this game. We have to really think about, okay, what is the player going to see in this area? Can they click all the different regions they need to click? Um, you know, can they see all the things we want them to see? They need to sort of understand how things fit relative to each other. Uh, the thing that actually fires the ball and aims it, if you check out one of my other videos, it's called Unity Quick Jam. I basically put that together uh, in about 20 minutes or so. Um, it was part of a talk that I did, but it's basically the same kind of ball throwing mechanic. Um, so there's a first person camera here, there's a throw holder, and actually you can throw things other than the ball in this game as well, so that's kind of interesting. And so this this is a system I, I've, I first I wrote it just to throw a ball around and then I had to rewrite it to throw any kind of object, so I was not thinking far enough ahead on that one. And FP rig uh, stands for first person rig, and that's just sort of the thing that rotates around. It has a camera on it, um, which is disabled right now, but I can turn it on. And since the main character's head is still turned on, you can see the inside of his or her head. Interesting. Obviously, we, we switched that off when we were playing the actual game. Um, what else can I talk about? When you go between different areas, you follow paths, and those are defined in, in different ways. Some of these, when we first started, uh, Frederico would just make a mesh, and I would read, there's this really tiny mesh here, really thin mesh that defines a path, and I would read half the vertices out of it, half the points out, and that would give me a, a path. But now what I'm doing is I have my own path script, and I wrote my own editor, UI thing, and that's something you can do in Unity, which is really convenient if you want to just add functionality for something that it doesn't support yet. So editing paths is one of those things, and you can just drag points around and click next to add a new point. I also have a function for dropping these points to the terrain, so if this terrain was uneven, then the points would snap to it. In this case, the, the, the floor is completely flat, so I don't need to worry about that. But later on uh, in this game, things do get very bumpy, so that comes in handy. Um, that's sort of just the really basic idea of some of the things that are going on here. Um, I would love to talk in more detail about how light mapping works, how animations work, how we sync up animations, and we actually do some stuff in here. I'll show you really quickly where the 
the main character will pause a bit in between steps. You might not be able to notice it because it's pretty subtle, but there, those are values that we have and the script set up to do that. Um, this game was programmed in C-sharp, so I would love to talk about how C-sharp works. Um, and if you have any questions about things I haven't covered, things that you'd want us to cover, Basically, this has been sort of a behind-the-scenes video, but we also want to do videos that are more traditional tutorials that just give you some assets from the game so that you can, you know, use the models, use the character, use some basic scripts, and then follow along to build a totally different type of game. This game has a bunch of different gameplay in it that we can talk about, but we're also going to build other things totally unrelated to it using some of the same content. So if you hit up our Tumblr at aloneindreams.tumblr.com, there's a big ask button and you can click that and you can ask us uh, anything that you're interested in finding out about what we're doing, um, questions about how to use various features in Unity. Um, we definitely learned a lot about a lot of different things and, and there are some interesting shortcomings to Unity that we ran into but overall I think it's still a really great tool to use. We've gotten tons of work done really quickly and it looks pretty good and it's just been a lot of fun. So get in touch, let us know what you think, let us know what you want to see, and uh, we'll get to work on it. <laughs> Thanks for listening.